All right, this type of problem is a little bit different than the last. Uh, and the last one, uh, 2, 5, and 6, we were given a lower number and an upper number, or a single number and then to the left or to the right. And we were told to find probabilities. All right, this time, um, we're going to be given an area to the either to the left or to the right. All right, this one, we're given an area to the left. All right, and we're being told to find this particular z-score. The area to the left is 0.9525. We want to find this z-score. Right. That is not the job of the normal CDF on your calculator. That's the job of the inverse normal, which is down here, option number three. All right. So inverse normal takes in area to the left, and it spits out a z-score that has that area to the left. So we're going to put in this 0.9525. close it off and then it's going to return this z-score that we're looking for. So 1.66959 it wants it to two decimal places so there's the second decimal place, the next number is a 9 so we're going to round it up to 1.67 so 1.67 okay so that's how you use um, the inverse normal feature if you're given an area to the left and a z-score now, something similar to that, this problem over here, number 7, uh, it's asking us to find Z.05, a very, very, very important Z-score, what we call a critical value. The Z value that has this area to the right of it is what we call a critical value. So we're looking for this Z-score. It actually ends up being 1.645. I've already done this problem. I'm going to do a similar one in just a second. But I wanted you to see this one. Um, same thing, uh, we need the inverse normal because we're given an area, 0.05, and we're looking for a z-score that has that area. That's the inverse normal's job. Only this time, we don't put the number in exactly like we did last time. This is the area to the right, this uh, 0 0.05. We need the area to the left, so we need to s either A, subtract that from 1, 1 minus 0.05, right, and hit enter. There's the 1.6448, uh, and they want us to round it to three places, so 1.645 because that next number is 8. Or we could also have done that part in our head, the uh, 1 minus 0.05 got the 0.95, right, and then hit enter. Got the same thing. So this may be the way that, that most of you do it, just because it's, it gives like uh, a way to do it given the number that you have. So there's the 0 .05. We just plug the 0 .05 right after that one minus. All right, so let's do a similar problem just to make sure that we have it down. This one's Z.01, another one that we see. Uh, not as often as the 0 .05, but we do see it from time to time. All right, so same thing, inverse normal. All right, we're looking for a z-score. We know an area, so that's the inverse normal's job. All right, inverse normal, 1 minus 0 0.01. All right, and it gives us a 2.326. Uh, it wants two decimal places this time, so 2.33. Another one that we see a lot in the z-distribution. Now, I do want to show you that if you uh, forget to do the 1 minus, If you just put in the 0.01, it'll give you the same number, but it'll give you its opposite. It'll give you the negative. So negative 2.3263, just like it was up here, but because we forgot to subtract it from 1, it gives us the negative version of the number. All right, remember, the Z distribution is perfectly symmetric. So the number that corresponds to an area of 1% in the right tail will be the opposite uh, of the number that has that area in the left tail. Okay, so because of that symmetry, that's why we're getting the sign changes. But Z alpha, or Z with this number below it, is area to the right. So technically, to, to get it correct, you either need to remember to take the absolute value of these numbers, making sure you take the positive version, or just remember to make that adjustment. Right? It gives us area to the right. Inverse normal takes an area to the left. So we've got to make this adjustment. 